Hello and welcome back to the Lobo Designs channel. My name is Heather Lynn. I'm the owner of Lobo Designs and I'm here today to show you how to create a circular or radial design in Adobe Illustrator for use with laser cutting or engraving or engraving on tumblers. We're going to go over how to create a perfectly circular design for use on your laser. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to do is create a circle on my artboard that will match the size of the design that I'm looking to achieve. For this, I'm going to go with a three and a half inch circle. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool, which is L on your keyboard, or it is the circle tool over here. If you don't see it inside of this menu, like I said before in my tutorials, you can always right click or hold down and left click on this menu to expand to see the other options in the sub menu. You'll want the ellipse tool for this one and you can either click to enter the dimensions of the circle or you can click and drag to do it yourself. So I'm going to click on here. I'm going to do a 3.5 inch width by 3.5 inch width, I'm going to click OK, and now I have my circle. Using the selection tool, I'm just going to move that off to the side because I don't need it just yet. For this design, I'm going to import a flower that I drew in Procreate, and I'm going to make the flower rotate all the way around in a circular pattern. So let's import the flower that I want to use for this design. So I'm going to place the SVG, Command Shift P or Control Shift P if you are on Windows. I'm going to be using this floral design, I'm going to make it smaller, clicking anywhere on the artboard to place it, and now it is in my design. So I am going to make this a different color, and I'm going to zoom in and make sure that it is the correct height and width for what I'm thinking for this design. So again, with the smart guides, I'm hovering to make sure I'm at the center. And there we go. So I'm holding down Option and Shift at the same time, and I'm resizing from center, scaling down, and I think that should work. So this is the size that I'm going to go with. I'm going to move this over. I don't need that circle yet. I'm going to make a marker for this so that I can rotate it all the way around. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make a marker at the top of here, right in the center, so we know what the center of this flower is. So I'm going to use the line tool, which is the backslash key above your return key or your enter key on your keyboard, or it is the line segment tool over here in the menu bar. I'm going to find center of the floral design. I'm gonna zoom in here find where we think there it says center in there so I'm going to click here I'm going to shift I'm just going to draw an, a basic line and I'm going to make sure that it has a stroke to it using the selection tool holding making sure I have nothing selected and now using the selection tool I'm going to hold down shift and I'm just going to move this up to the top here so now this is my marker this is what I'm going to rotate around to make the circular design so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select both of these together and I'm going to group them so command G or control G if you're on Windows or there is a button on the left side that says group so now these are a group this is one shape currently that I am going to zoom out a bit and I'm going to go into the transform effects to show you how to easily do a rotate of the exact same design. And then you can actually easily adjust it and make additional designs accordingly. So let's get started on how to do that. Using your V selection tool, make sure that you have the group of these two objects selected. You're gonna go up into the effect menu. You're going to go to distort and transform, and then you're going to go to transform. A menu will pop up that you are going to be using. It is the transform effect menu. Make sure that your settings match mine. It should be 100, 100, 0, 0. Right now we're not using the angle, but we will be in a moment. You want transform objects selected. You don't have to have transform patterns selected for this design, but keep that selected just in case you use it in the future. And what you're going to do over here in this little box is you're going to click on the one that is at top center. So you see how I moved it from the center to top center? Make sure that you have that one selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to make copies of this. So I'm going to start out with making 10 copies of this floral and I'm going to ask it to place it in a circular pattern. So I'm going to do 10 copies of this, 10 copies. And then the fun part about the angle is that you don't have to do the math, it will do the math for you. Except you want to make sure, do you see what's happening here? <laughs> You can either scroll with your mouse or you can enter the mathematical equation in there if you'd like. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make nine 
divisions into the 360 degree angle. One less than the copies because I don't need a copy placed on top of my original design. Again, the copies is 10, so I'm going to divide up here by nine. So I'm going to do 360 degrees, which is the full scale of the circle, divide it by nine. And I'm going to hit tab. And now you'll see that these are all spaced out. I don't know that this will work for my circle, but we can arrange that later. And I think that this looks good for what we'll need. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to get out of this menu. Now, right now, the way that these work is because I'm in a transform state, you can only see the floral and the first line that I drew. The rest are technically an illusion to the design right now until we expand their appearance later. So laser owners, if I lost you here and you're about to skip ahead, do not skip the step at the end where you need to expand the appearance because right now, if you look at this design in outline mode, which I think we all know by now is my favorite mode, command Y or control Y on your keyboard, look what happens. You lost all of your other designs. Preview mode, outline mode, preview mode. So now I'm going to show you how to fix that and how we can edit this design a little bit more so that they're not so overlapping. So what I'm going to do here is we're always working off of this bottom one. This is our original. This is the one that's not an illusion right now. So I'm going to bring this over here to center. I'm going to find the center of this circle. Let's find where this, let's mark center over here first. So where are we at on center? There we go. So I'm going to bring this over here. There is center, and I'm going to make sure that the top of that line aligns with the center of this circle. So if you can see right now, this is currently in the dead center of this circle. So what I'm going to do now is enter isolation mode. And by doing that, I'm going to be able to work on just this shape below. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to do a double click to make sure I'm in isolation mode. Up here, we'll confirm if you're in isolation mode. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select this floral shape which should also have this tied to it. And I'm going to hold down shift and I'm gonna bring this flower out to meet the circle and watch what happens when I let go. Now we have a floral design that we can work with and I think that we need more copies. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna add a couple of copies by selecting this, getting out of the transform mode. I usually hit escape, but I, there's a way that you can escape it in the menu. It's way easier to just hit escape on your keyboard. Now you're going to make sure that you have this bottom one selected. Again, this is the only one that's not an illusion. And you're gonna go over here into the transform Click on here, it's gonna open that same menu back up. You don't wanna add a second transform, you're editing the original. So I'm gonna go down here and let's say we wanna do 12 copies. So 12 copies, again, and your angle needs to be adjusted. So we're gonna do 360 divided by 11 for this. And I think we can probably still fit another one in there. So let's go 13 copies and we'll do 360 divided by 12. That's cute. Who thinks we can fit one more? I do, let's try it. Copies 14, 360 divided by 13. Yes, there we go. So I'm gonna click okay. And now right now, we don't need this background circle anymore. So I'm going to select the background circle and I'm just gonna hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of that. Now we have more of a visual of what we need this to look like. Now we're going to expand the appearance of these shapes. So we're going to click on the bottom one again, make sure that you have this selected. You're going to go up into the object menu and you're going to go into expand appearance. And now you have this entire thing expanded. When you go into outline mode, it's going to see all of these shapes. And what you can do now is you can command shift G, control shift G, or you can click ungroup on the right hand side or left click and do ungroup. And then you can go in here in the center and delete this. So that will give you the perfectly circular design that you're looking for when you are trying to create something for initials or something to letter inside. Whatever you need a circular design for, that'll do it. But you can also take this a step further. So I'm going to hit Command Z, Command Z again, and I'm going to hit Command Z again. I'm going to make sure that I don't have this expanded yet. So I'm back into outline mode. I'm back to just this floral just this group. And I'm going to show you how in isolation mode, you can add more to this design, which is kind of neat. So let's hop over into isolation mode by double clicking on the floral shape at the bottom, the original one. We're in isolation mode, you can see here. I'm going to zoom in right here on this floral. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make a copy of this flower. So I'm going to option, shift, click and drag. 
and watch what happens when I let go. We have more because it happens on every copy. So what you can do here is you can zoom in and you can option shift, shrink this to cent from center. And then if you want, you can move this back. And now you have even better of a cute little design. And you can do that again. So almost like a mandala feel. If you like creating those, you can create this little guy. Option shift click. Shrink this down. So on and so forth. And it starts looking really cute. But then what you would do at the end is once you're done editing, you can click on this bottom one. We're still in isolation mode. You want to hit escape to make sure that you're out of isolation mode. Make sure that you have this original group selected and you want to go up again into object expand appearance. This is a step that you cannot miss, especially if you're using it for laser designs. Because again, if you don't do option expand, this is how your laser will read it. So you want to make sure that you go up into option expand. While I'm in outline mode, I'll do this. You can see option expand appearance. And now you can see the rest of them in outline mode and you know that it's ready for your laser. Once you're done, click this group, command shift G all the way down until it's ungrouped. Get this guy out of the middle and then your design is ready for exporting or continue to edit if you'd like. And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate and Adobe Illustrator beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.